I think you all remember me by now. Still, I remain Pamela. <laughs> Mace isn't here tonight. She might show up in the background, who knows. Um, so welcome to the Wednesday Wellbeing, the San Francisco Dharma Collective. Of course, I think you're also familiar, continue to be familiar with the way that the San Francisco Dharma Collective is in fact a collective of Sangha members who volunteer their time and their energy to make this space available. Right now, it still continues to be the Zoom space. Um, might be another space one day as like everything's again changing before our eyes. Who knows? It's kind of exciting. It's kind of weird. At least that's my experience both. Um, anyway, thank you all for joining tonight. Appreciate as always seeing you. And uh, if you can throw some Donna towards the center, that would be great. Donna, I like to think of as generous monetary contributions, but could be lots of other ways that you contribute, like the volunteer thing or however you help support the center is great. Um, it definitely helps pay the bills that come in and it also goes towards supporting the teachers who are offering the teachings, which is like, the most relevant thing in my life, honestly, and continues to be. Um, so that's a gift. And as you guys probably remember from last week, Eve was saying that we were gonna have a guest teacher this week. And we do. Our friend, longtime friend, he's taught here before, but like, I mean, it's been a couple years, I think. Um, Jeff Tip, you can see him there on the screen if you're in gallery view, he's waving. He's actually connected through a um, couple ways. He's connected to the Dharma in a couple of formal ways uh, through his teaching at the Blue Heron Zen Center in Seattle. So that's fun because I don't know about the other nights, but we don't get a ton of Zen people coming in. Um, he's here tonight though in particular, to, to lead the feeding your demon practice. Talk a little bit about that and, and take us through that practice like, like Lopan Chandra does. Um, and he is additionally affiliated with Tar Mandala. And he's known Lama Sultram, that's Lopan Chandra's teacher. We don't often talk that much about Tar Mandala or, or Lama Sultram, but Lama Sultram is why we have Feeding Your Demons. Um, she created that practice and she, through the help of the people who have gathered around her through the years, established that Tara Mandala Retreat Center in Colorado, which is where Lopan Chandra is also an authorized teacher um, and part of the lineage and the tradition that is coming here to the San Francisco Dharma Collective is, is also coming down through, through Tara Mandala. Um, and so Jeff has studied and, and actually has a background in psychotherapy. So this is a new kind of dimension to the Feeding Your Demons work. I don't know how many of us are familiar again, because usually we just roll up and have some either lojong and, and practice, maybe lately we've been doing the four measurables um, with a once a month feeding your demons. Uh, but this month, I'm just giving a little bit more context for, for Jeff and for the feeding your demon practice and the connection to Lama Sultram uh, to flesh that out a bit. So there's this cool thing where some folks who are uh, psychotherapists can be certified to be guiding people in psychotherapy using feeding your demons. Um, and maybe maybe Jeff will talk to that a little bit. I, I think it would be easy for all of us to imagine, right? Meeting those parts of ourselves that we might think of as the demon or those encumbered energetic patterns in ourselves, you know, and doing that with the aid of, of a trained professional. It could be sort of cool. Um, 
we won't be doing that explicitly tonight. We'll, he'll just lead us, Jeff will just lead us in the practice and we'll be our own willing, bold participants as usual. Um, so with all of that said, thank you, Jeff, for agreeing to come tonight and to share your facilitation. It's lovely to have you. I, I, I've known Jeff for a long time. And so it is actually sweet for me that you're here personally. Um, and please take us, take us into it. Thank you, Pamela. It's really uh, great to be here again. Great, great to see you once again after all these years. Um, so I want to just begin actually by kind of we say arriving here. Let's let's just begin by arriving. So just for now, kind of letting our <clears throat> our usual concerns rest, let them rest. Whatever we brought along with us today, whatever is current for us, let it rest. Let it rest unattended. Allow it to just be in the background, whatever, whatever might be, you might say haunting us. And we engage the breath. Take a deep, full inhale, just through the nose and a brief pause and a long extended exhale through pursed lips and rest briefly in that natural pause before the inhale begins again. So let's do a few of those. Deep, deep in breath and then a long extended out breath through pursed lips like blowing out through a straw. Now I'm gonna follow along with you. Good way to settle down. naturally deepening the ease of this moment. Long, long out breath. And so what's here now when there's no problem to solve? What's here now when there's no problem to solve? Simply being and rest in that.
I have a couple of fun stories from the Zen tradition that relate to actually demon work and coping with life. The first one is uh, around uh, Joju and Zen Master Namchan. Joju was about 17 years old, had just come into the monastery for training. Joju, by the way, trained until he was 80 years old, continued training, and then went out to teach and apparently lived to 120 teaching in China. But this is at the very beginning, very beginning of his training. And one day, Joju went to Zen Master Namchan and asked, what is the true way? He's asking, like, how, how do we proceed? How do we enter the Dharma? What is the true way? Namchan answered, everyday mind is the true way. And Joju said, then should I try to keep it or not? And Namchan said, if you try to keep it, you're already mistaken. But Joju persisted. But if I do not try, how can I understand the true way? Namchan replied, the true way is not dependent on understanding or not understanding. Understanding is illusion. Not understanding is simply blankness. But if you completely attain the true way before thought, it is like space, clear and void. So, why do you make right and wrong? And upon hearing this, Jojo got a, a glimpse of awakening, just really woke him up in the moment. And this is so true of, uh, of meditation practices in general that we, um, we kind of grasp onto them or, you know, make great effort and hold them tightly. And then we're kind of trapped in the method itself rather than entering naturally to the space that's pointed to in every practice. There's one more story. This is about Layman Pang. Layman Pang also wonderful Chinese lay master, actually, he was a layman. And his wife and also his daughter were very, very deep practitioners, well-known in China. One day, the layman, musing on life and practice, uttered these words of wisdom. Oh, difficult, difficult, difficult. It's like trying to scatter 10,000 sesame seeds over a tree. And the wife right away retorted, oh, easy, easy, easy. It's like touching your feet to the ground when you get off the bed. The daughter was not to be outdone. Immediately she commented, not, not difficult, not easy on the tips of 10,000 grasses, the patriarch's meaning. Hmm? Simply that, pointing simply that. So that's the you know, language of Zen, but it addresses exactly what we're up to tonight, finding our way. And by the way, what are demons? We're going to be doing feeding of demons practice. What are demons? And I think 
most simply stated, Lama Sultram was shared with me one day, really, basically our reactivity, our reactivity to experience, our reflex, how we grapple with and negotiate with uh, and try and find our way through our everyday experience, our everyday mind, actually. So then, what are yours? What are yours, Gina? We're going to choose one tonight. And just to clarify, there's you know, four types of demons, actually. You could say four ways that we are reactive. Outer demons, we're reacting to anything manifesting through the senses, tangible demons of the outer world. Money, toys, food, intoxicants, persons, all there is out there that we shy away from or in some way trouble us, outer demons. Inner demons arise from the mind. Emotions, fantasies, memories, thoughts, depression, anxiety and fears. We're all familiar with these. These are the inner demons that kind of grab our attention and you might say, distract us from everyday mind. Distract us from just here, just now. Third kind of demon is demon of elation. Elation. Attachment to prominence, to achievement, fame, reputation, and power. Spiritual attainment. All of that craving and reaching for something apparently very longed for and worthy, but it's so it's so intoxicating that we just we become lost in reaching for. So it's a form of all of our forms of attachment to you could say positive experiences. And then the last demon is the demon of egocentricity, which fundamentally is the source of all the other demons and is uh, simply promoting and protecting our self-importance, our, our survival even, you might say, whatever threatens us in that way. So you'll want to think through, and probably maybe you have a favorite demon that you are familiar with working with. Hey, Jeff. Yes. I was just curious, we're getting a comment about the sound, I guess. Could you, is it possible to uh, project more in your voice or get more sound somehow? Is that a little bit better? Well, other people are saying you sound fine, so. Maybe if folks try their machine and I mean, yeah. I'm hearing you fine, but there's just some comments in the chat, so. Okay. Well, I do kind of speak softly. I apologize. <laughs> I'll try and be more direct. So first you want to choose specifically the demon you're going to work with tonight, whatever it might be, one of those four kinds, inner, outer, elation, or egocentricity. And it doesn't matter if you label it or not, if it's something that's, you know, troubling, something that bothers you, let's, let's work with it, something that has some charge on it. You might even say the more charge it has, the better. And we begin basically closing our eyes and we keep our eyes closed as much as possible until the end of the process. But you wanna be situated across from another seat, another chair. The best would be if your camera was kind of uh, a sideways glance at you. I, I can tell if you're going from one seat to the other. And I can also maybe see you nod as I ask, if you've uh, 
experience something or if you've got something actually in view. So get yourself arranged so you have a seat to go to and the one you're in. So two opposing seats, that's the setup. Okay. Good. You might even try, you know, with your eyes closed, you reach across and find the other seat easily. So it's easy going back and forth. Really good. All right, and then we're gonna take nine relaxation breaths, we call them. We're gonna begin by taking some deep breaths. First, breathe into any physical tension that you're holding in your body. And hooking that tension with the breath, release it with the out breath. Three breaths. And now breathe into any emotional tension that you're holding. Notice where you're holding emotional tension in your body. And then hooking that tension with the breath. Release it with the out breath. Now breathe into any emotional, I'm sorry, mental tension. Breathe into any mental tension or worries that you're holding. And notice where you're holding mental tension in your body. And then hooking that tension with the breath, release it with the out breath. Very good. Now generate a heartfelt motivation to practice for the benefit of yourself and for all beings. This is raising bodhicitta. And now, thinking about the demon you've chosen to work with, you know, perhaps remembering a particular time or an incident when it came up strongly. Let that be vivid. And scan your body and locate where you're holding this demon most strongly in your body. and nod when you've located the demon in your body.
Okay, I'm assuming you've, you've located it. So where is the demon held in your body? Make note of that. And we're not using what we call tracking forms. It's just to make note of it. Find it held in your body. And see what is its shape. What is its color? And what is its texture? And what is its temperature? So now intensify this sensation, the texture, the temperature, what color it is. Let that become very vivid and intense. You're really relating to it. And now you want to allow this, this shape, its color, its texture, whatever form it's taken. Allow that, which is in your body, to move out of your body and become personified in front of you as a being with limbs, a face, eyes, and so on. Nod when you see the demon in front of you. Just allow it to be really vivid. Now notice, what size is it? What is its color? What is the surface of its body like? What is its density? Does it have a gender? What is its character like? What is its emotional state? What is the look in its eyes? And notice something about it that you didn't see before. Now ask the demon the following questions one by one. After me, what do you want? And speaking to the demon, what do you really need? A 
And how will you feel when you get what you really need? Now, switch places, keeping your eyes closed as much as possible. Good. And take a moment to settle into the demon's body and feel what it's like to be the demon. Nod when you're in the body of the demon. How does it feel to be in the demon's body? How does your normal self look from the demon's point of view? Now answer the questions, speaking as the demon. So I'll say the beginning of each answer, and then you repeat the beginning and complete the answer, speaking as the demon. What I want is, What I really need is and when I get what I really need, I will feel Really notice that. When I get what I really need, I will feel. And now return to your original seat. And take a moment to settle back into your own body. And see the demon opposite you. And nod when you're back in your own body and you can see the demon in front of you. So now, 
dissolve your body into nectar that has the quality of how the demon would feel if it got what it really needed, that feeling that is very specific, how it would feel. Feeling, the feeling the demon would have when it gets what it really needs. Dissolve your body into that nectar and notice the color of the nectar. And now feed the demon this nectar and notice how the demon takes it in. Offering this nectar, which is the feeling a demon would have when it gets what it really needs. An infinite supply of nectar flows to the demon and nurtures it to complete satisfaction. Take all the time you need. To completely satisfy the demon with this nectar. An infinite supply of nectar flows to the demon and nurtures it to complete satisfaction. The nod and the demon is completely satisfied. Take whatever time you need. Assuming now that the demon has reached complete satisfaction, it's consumed, absorbed all the nectar it possibly can. Is there a being present now that the demon is completely satisfied?
And if so, ask that being, are you the ally? And if you're not seeing another being after the demon is completely satisfied, invite the ally to appear. Simply invite it. And see what comes. And what size is it? And what is its color? And what is the surface of its body like? What is its density? Does it have a gender? What is its character like? What's its, what is its emotional state? And what is the look in its eyes? And notice something about it that you didn't see before. Now, ask the ally these questions Repeat the questions out loud, one by one, after me. How will you help me? How will you protect me? What pledge do you make to me? How can I access you? Now, switch places back into your original seat, back into the ally seat. And take a moment to settle into the ally's body. Settle into the ally's body and nod when you feel you're in the body of the ally. How does it feel to be in the ally's body? 
How does it feel to be in the Allah's body? And how does your normal self look from the Allah's point of view? Now, answer the questions, speaking as the ally. I'll say the beginning of each answer, and you repeat the beginning, and then complete the answer, speaking as the ally. I will help you by. I will protect you by. I pledge I will. You can access me by. Now return to your original seat. Very good. Take a moment to settle back into your own body. And to see the ally opposite you. And nod when you're back in your own body. See the ally in front of you. Look into its eyes and feel its energy pouring into your body. As you feel the energy of the ally coming into your body, it spreads all the way down to the soles of your feet, to your fingertips, and throughout the whole of your body. Completely saturating your whole body.
Now imagine that the ally dissolves into light. Notice the color of this light. And feel this light dissolving into you, integrating this luminosity into every cell of your body. And take note of the feeling of the integrated energy of the ally in your body. And now you, with the integrated energy of the ally, dissolve, dissolve, and rest in the state that is present after the dissolution. Just rest. Now gradually come back to your body, recalling the feeling of the energy of the ally in your body. And now, as you open your eyes gradually, slowly, maintain the feeling of the energy of the ally in your body.
So how is that for anybody? Have any questions anybody has or how this unfolded for you? What worked? What, what was struggling with? We'll see if we can bring some clarification to the process. Quite a powerful journey. I'm guessing, Pamela, people could raise their hand if in some way or, or, or just unmute. Yeah, the chat's open and people can unmute themselves. And a lot of times people will raise their virtual hand or they might just raise their the physical hand. I don't know how many of us there are. Uh, it looks like about so. 20, yeah. Yeah, enough fit on the screen. So whatever you all whatever feel. Am I muted or unmuted? You, you're unmuted. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Looks like Ramit, Ramit has a question. Good. Yeah, um, in every week we meet, I'm always just eager to share my experience, I think. Uh, for, for me, it used to be a thing where I was like, you know, if I share my experience, there's a part of me that's like very... I felt like it was a little bit self-centered in a way or egotistical even. And now I'm starting to kind of respect my own experiences as well, um, which has been wonderful because that was one of the things I was working with uh, a couple of weeks back. Uh, and so I, um, yeah, my, my thing for me was I was having like a very, um, scattered mind and like and I wasn't trying to fight it but it was just that like it's my last week of my semester and so I'm trying to like just on it on it on it and do 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 and so um so yeah so long story short I was that was my my personification and it was part of it was that um and this like urge to go do, go do, go do, and this isn't good enough, and this isn't perfect enough, and, and all of that, right? That yeah. comes with kind of finish the, the semester on a high note. Um, and so that, and then, um, and that showed up as, as uh, just based on the conversations I was having, it showed up as, as Kalima. Uh, <laughs> and so, uh, and so I was like, wow, okay. Uh, it's pretty interesting. And I, and I felt it in my, I had a very, I, I had been sensing it for a couple of days in my body. And so it was quite vivid for me. Uh, and so it showed up as Kalima kind of kept changing form. I was like, okay, I can't seem to track it down. So I'll just go with what happens. And then um, when it came time to, to feed Kalima, um, turned into Maitreya. <laughs> <laughs> And, uh, and then it was really interesting to sit down as Maitreya and then tell, you know, Ramit that, um, and make a pledge to Ramit that, that, hey, you're, you're okay, like you're on the right path and keep, keep going. And uh, yeah, it was, it was really interesting. Like I was even speaking right now, I'm like shaking a little bit because it's, it's such a, um, it's one of those things that you're like, you know, maybe maybe I'm just going insane. Uh, and, that, and I was like, it's okay if you feel like, if you feel like that, it's okay, just go with it, just go with it. Um, and then, um, and when I settled, settled back into my body, I immediately just started laughing um, because I was like, what am I doing here, sitting here talking to Maitreya and, um, and all of that. But, but yeah, it's very interesting because I very definitely feel like you know, this need to strive and perfect is, uh, is a very interesting, like, um, need to get the path right. Mm -hmm. 
I'm noticing more and more that there is that that duality itself between right and wrong in the path is another stepping stone, um, another thing to be noticed and and to be grounded back into the body again and again. So, yeah, that was my takeaway. Great, it, it, and it's so good that you uh, you know you share whatever comes and you actually reveal it to everyone. It's it benefits everybody. Everyone has different experiences, but there are similarities. And so uh, really, please don't anyone hesitate to share what happened or complain or wish it was otherwise or, or be delighted. <laughs> it's whatever is true for you. It'd be lovely to, um, to hear from everyone. Thank you so much from it. Very good. Yeah, Di Diane? Yeah, yeah, thank you. Um, I worked on kind of a phobia I had. I had a real catastrophe a couple of years ago and, and you know, the Dharma got me through. The Dharma was my path, but it left me, the whole ordeal kind of left me with a phobia about, um, I have this phobia about crashing my car. So when Ooh. I park, I'm super careful. You know, my, I have my eyesight checked, it's good, but I'm just, I have this scary feeling. And so thank you so much for this practice. Oh my gosh. So my demon was the size of a giant glacier because it's um, kind of long story short, it just, um, it's this icy, you know, ice is cold, but it hurts too, it's stingy. So it kind of can feel hot and cold. But anyway, what I realized was um, the scaredness that I have. And I, I have, um, I, I've been working on this I've been doing the internal work because um, it's a way to kind of diffuse the smoke of confusion. So just kind of the micro noticing of these discursive little thinking processes and these self torturing processes that distract me from uncertainty. But I realized that um, my parents were my protectors, but they scared me. They hurt me, you know, physically ridiculing, punishing, um, uh, not caring for me. So somehow I realized kind of like a, a bit overriding, a lot of my internal processes are probably what a very young child figured out to do to deal with uncertainty. I didn't have you know parents guiding me to, to here's like, here's an effective way to live your life. Here's a way to deal with uncertainty and uncomfortable situations. I didn't, so this young child figure, had figured out these ways. So my parents were my protectors, they scared me, they hurt me, so somewhere, in here somewhere, I protect myself by scaring me with the fear of crashing my car. That's what I think, that's what came up with this. That, that this young person's like, oh, this is, what, this is how you protect yourself. So anyway, I hope I'm not rambling on and thank you so much, dear teacher, thank you. So Diane, it's wonderful. Uh, you see that intelligence, that wonderful intelligence of your, your the child in you, even that that uh, I call it the intelligence prior to thought, but it's, we can call it intuition, but it, it makes great sense. And it's very intimate and, and actually quite unique for each person. So it's lovely that you're in touch with that. It makes sense to you. Yeah, thank you for that. And I can love that and accept that and honor the dignity of this person that's trying to cope with, you know, all this life in a good way. Thank you. Good. Yeah. Uh, so um, I'm going to speak up because that's a lot that has to do with my demon. Good, George. Find you my voice. Uh, just a little background. I don't. I uh, I love coming to this group, but sometimes I get distracted and have other things. So I was just just so astonished how this all unveiled tonight because I had a lot of anxiety and stuff coming in here and and um, yeah. And so I guess you could say I was like ready ready to sit in the seat and ready to face my demon. I, I really felt uh, there wasn't any hesitancy. It was just, you know, like just really dive into it. 
And uh, a part of the uh, thing about finding my voice has to do with, uh, you know, like um, I got a history of rage and that kind of stuff. So, you know, I try to squash that stuff down. So uh, my demon was sitting there and kind of like exhibiting that, that powerful fury, rage, whatever you want to call it, that, that, that uh, um, you know, just sort of challenging me. And, and standing there, and it really was in the beginning a demon, you know, very fierce and, you know, with fangs and all that kind of stuff. But after time, just sitting there, sitting with it, <clears throat> facing it, and, and, and not stirring away, but, but just looking into its eyes, it kind of like it did transform. And it became like literally my ally that basically said, you know, let me be your voice. <clears throat> Let me stand up for you. Let me speak for you. And um, so, yeah, it was a, a very uh, transformative experience. Thank you. Yeah, wonderful. Good, George. Wonderful. You were ready for that. Yeah. <laughs> Anyone here, I think, will be surprised if you begin to just speak about how it was or how it wasn't. Surprised at what becomes clear to you when the rest of us are listening. Just say there's a good listening in, in the space now. So it's an opportunity to be heard and actually hear yourself more deeply. So I invite anyone to speak up. I would, I would just offer a comment. Yeah. It was interesting when the ally was there and um, myself that I self I perceive like the ally was like offering you know to me and um, it was this just this incredible like sort of shy timidness kind of also emerged like with that offering, you know, that was here, that was like, it was just, it was like, oh, wow, like, great. It, it, it's like, great, I, I can feel that, like I could feel that feeling, like one would, it was like, it was like the demon beating all over again, but it was like, the ally was the externalized imagined self. And it just, I don't know, it's something about it felt really good. And then as I moved through the engagement with the ally, it was like, just the, the sensory experience or the somatic experience of, um, of taking on the actual energetic um, fullness of the ally. It just felt really grounding and just good it just felt good so is this such a distinct like there was so much distinction in all of it for me it's not always so distinct so it mm. felt it, um yeah so i just wanted to share that thought i'd share that thank you thanks pamela um i have comments um Okay, Marianne, good. 
I think uh, Pamela bringing up the ally also had, um, also resonates with me. And I noticed that when I was the ally, I felt this sense of confidence and um, this reliability and dependent and just being able to be dependent. And um, when I was allowing the ally to kind of dissolve in me, I felt this sense of vulnerability and acceptance with it. And it's really interesting how your mind can really just trick you into going into these different um, body personas that are in your mind and in your head. And um, yeah, it was a pretty wild experience and I always try to avoid feeding your de demons and I hopped in and I saw it and I hopped out <laughs> and then I put it <laughs> back on. Um, and I'm really glad I did it because I, I've been avoiding this for a long time. So thank you. Yeah, I'm glad you joined us, Marianne. It's wonderful. Sure. Yeah, good for you. Hop back in. <laughs> right, I'm going to share something as well. Good, Eli. Uh, yeah, I'm Riz. This is Eli. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm just reading the name yeah, there. Fair enough. Um, I, I too had a similar resistance. Um, and I've actually avoided feeding your demons for, <laughs> I think, two and a half years now. It was the last time I did it. Um, Welcome back. <laughs> Thank you. But uh, <laughs> what, what I was quite surprised about was when I entered the demon, I was expecting to feel the feelings that the demon almost amplifies and personifies to an extreme, but it was, it was calm. It was like I'd actually left myself. And with it came a realization that the demon does not intend to impart the harm on me that I feel it does. Um, it's more of a, a kind of, it, it's, it's almost like it is, it offers that energy to me, but it doesn't want that. And that was one of its, one of its requests that it, 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 it allows me to understand that it's, it's there actually to help. Um, but first by helping me see that issue at its core. Um, yeah. That's, Very good. Very good. Could I uh, add something more to that? Good. Um, yeah, I definitely agree. Like, I think uh, one of the Tongan practices or the, one of the slogans, um, I, okay, I can't remember the slogan, but I, I very distinctly remember hearing that, you know, our these emotions that we often tend to fight are just showing us those parts where we are, you know, holding on in a, in a manner that we don't, we might not recognize. Mm -hmm. So, so like for, for me, like when I had that, the whole uh, Kalima thing, and it was, it was, it was much more vivid than that. And I, like, I was also like sweating while I was looking at that. And, um, and, and what it was, was literally like, for me, it was, like, hey, I know, it's not even like, I know something that you don't, but it's more that, you know, I might see, I might recognize things that, that others might not. And then, which we, which we all have that, right? Um, and so, yeah. and so when that happens, it's like, you want to stand on your ground and you want to be grounded in your experience and in your understanding to, to protect yourself, of course, but but also, and that's where that emotion arises as maybe anger or frustration or irritation. Uh, but then that's when you see that, that all of these emotions were really just compassion in disguise, um, which I think was like quite vivid uh, or, you know, I mean, it's just an interpretation again, but, but to see that, okay, these things are really just compassion in disguise and um, yeah, to, to me, that's like quite, quite a profound um, understanding. So I would definitely encourage you to, to, to explore that more. You, you say compassion in disguise. Who's, 
Whose compassion is it? What is that open-hearted compassion? Where does that come from? You recognize that? To me, it's just the Dharma. <laughs> it's more intimate than that, honestly. You're, yes, it's the Dharma. The, the, the Dharma is a, a system of pointing, pointing back, pointing back at the qualities that live vividly within us when we recognize them. So it's good. You see that, the power of compassion. You recognize it. And... It's an aspect of your own capacity. That's wonderful. It's very good news. Yeah. I mean, we, I think we're inclined to play ourselves down a bit. Um, and um, be a little shy about the, you might say, the, the mysterious blessing of being alive. And all of that includes. So it's wonderful when we recognize these qualities and then we have the suspicion, maybe that's something in me somewhere. We have that suspicion initially. It's good. It wants to express through you and me and everyone, everyone here, everyone who's never heard of it even. Yeah, good. I saw Jemmy's hand up a little bit ago. I don't know if he still wants to talk. It's not up now, not, not to put you on the spot. I just wanted to call that out in case. Okay. Well, I, I just wanted to say that, um, you know, I've done this feeding your demons practice probably uh, half a dozen or maybe eight times in the last, over the last two or three years. And I, always have a very, very difficult time with any kind of visualization practice. Mm. For the first several times I did it, I, I got hung up on, on that, that, well, I can't see this demon. I can't see this ally. I can't, you know, I, I can't see this. And so I, I, I finally got to the point where I just stopped caring about whether or not I could actually visualize it. If I could localize where the demon was in my body mm -hmm. and then have the feeling of it passing out into its seat mm -hmm. and then had the, the feeling of it. And, and I, so I just said, okay, well, I'm, I'm just going to do the practice. I'm just going to listen to the instruction. I'm just going to do the practice and not get hung up on what happens internally while I'm doing that. And so that was very, um, that was very vivid tonight when I just did the practice, just listened to the instructions, asked the questions, gave the answers. And there's all, you know, and then just doing that, there's all, there's just, you know, remarkable response that comes from the demon and comes from the ally and clarifies the situation. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's right. It's amazing. Yeah. But so so it, thank it you. Your, it was your willingness, so you see. Isn't that wonderful? This was your willingness right. uh, to just kind of give up on it and let it do its own process. And, right. and then the magic comes. It's really, I have to say magic. It's really wonderful because we're so informed by it. It's very intimate to us. Yeah, good. Kitty, I see your hand up. Yeah, hi. Thank you for this. Um, I haven't done this practice in particular, but uh, other similar visualizing kind of practices. Um, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I was I was dealing with uh, trauma that's been present and sometimes feeling overwhelming, just living in a female body. 
in general, but then the specifics of what's happened to me along the way that um, is traumatic. Um, and yeah, the the demon, um, you know, when asked like what what it what it needs, it was just this feeling of being like, you know, sort of like an animal stuck in a cage with people keep poking sticks at it. It's like it just needs to like not have that happen. Um, so just just even seeing that was uh, was powerful. You know, just to be shielded from that. But um, what showed up in terms of ally? Um, this is so familiar to me, I've just learned over the years, I'm, I'm a psychotherapist as well. And, uh, you know, ju I just realized for myself and hearing a lot of other people's stories, how when we have trauma, it's really, really easy not to no not to remember, not to notice and not to remember that there were helpers there mm. and who showed up was a former clinical supervisor of mine who I've actually had contact with her during COVID um, and she helped me with something but uh, she stood by me while I had to fight the power at the clinic I worked at and I lost you know and they were bad you know it was ugly and she stood by me every step of the way and stayed working with me afterwards and you know, it was just one more thing where like, yeah, right. I, I remember that story as that thing that happened with those people that were bad. And it's like, no, the thing that happened was that I had this beautiful person alongside of me that, that you know, believed me every, you know, and helped, helped me and stood up for me every, every part of the way. So, um, yeah. Sounds like an ally. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. I, a lot of times I have something much more fanciful show up when I'm asked to visualize something, but uh, you know, this was very, a very real person and really lovely to, you know, reincorporate her back into myself. So just that realizing whenever it's tough, you know, just whew, look around, there's someone or something there that the trauma just like, whew, like blinds you to it. So, yeah. Yes, Kitty. Honestly, that's you. You point to something really essential, sort of central. The flip side of these, uh, you know, traumatic experiences we have, or challenges, whatever, scaring us. There is a flip side. It doesn't come without the positive aspect. It's we just, if we're willing, just to notice as a potential or as you in your experience, you know, a person was there alongside you. Wonderful. Um, it's it's never just the dark. It's the dark and the light. Yeah. Good. Thank you. Good for you. Glad you jumped in. This is your first time, then, yeah. Um, you know, I've read I've read uh, stuff about the feeding your demons practice, but I haven't done it live with people before. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we've got just a few minutes left. I'd love to hear from anyone who hadn't spoken. Love that. This this is really fun for me, I think. You know, I'll share with you. What surprises me is how cooperative the... Uh, the intuition or the, the, the subconscious, whatever, that some aspect of ourselves, you place yourself in that dilemma of something is supposed to appear or something has a, a response to questions that we ask it. And we know it's sort of, it's all made up, but then not really. And, the, and this, experience of it having a life of its own, the life of the demon, the life of the ally, that, uh, and we can be in relation to it. It's a relational experience. We don't cordon off part of our experience and say, well, I, you know, I can't go there, that's not me. Uh, 
the invitation to be related to or, or relate with all these surprising, what we'll call kind of flip sides of things that we call them a demon. They're, they're hindrances in some way. They, they uh, crowd out the naturalness of our, our true nature, our deeper nature. But, uh, but they're cooperative if we give them a chance to sort of get it off their chest, you might say. And, uh, and, and release us from their grasp. It's a very powerful process. I have to acknowledge Lama Sotram and, and her you know, genius in putting it together. Wonderful. And, uh, and wonderful to be with all of you. Pamela, thank you so much for kind of coordinating things. And also Jesse and each one of you that took part in I took part in it. Yeah. Yeah. Bless you all. Bless you all. Thank you, Jeff. Thanks for coming in, leading us through this process tonight. It felt really good. Yeah, it did. It was great. I enjoyed it. I, I don't know exactly what's going to happen next week. I mean, I, I suspect that we'll have a fine teacher. Um, I think it's going to be Eve, but I really don't know. <laughs> um, and I suspect equally that uh, we'll go back to our Lojong teachings. Um, and I, I look forward to it. I'll be here. And I, I hope to continue to see the folks that I, I see regularly. And, and we'll see if there's some new folks too. Thank you as always, everyone. Enjoy the week. Okay. Bye, folks. Thanks, Pamela. Bye. Thanks, Jason. Pamela. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Thank you Jeff. Bless Thank you all. Bless you all. Bless you all.